Welcome to MMA FanCast. My name is Luke Basin. Welcome back to everyone who is already subscribers to the channel. If you're not already subscribers, please subscribe so you can see more great interviews, including the one coming at you right now. First time guest on the show and about ready to make his debut in seven days, just a week time for 247 Fighting Championships, Braunenberg 20. Very excited to have Jaden Blake on the show. Jaden, welcome to the show. Hey, Luke. Wonderful having you on the show. Should have also said that it's going to be a conversation we'll talk about. You are 18 years old. That's the youngest you can be an MMA fighter in Pennsylvania. So congratulations being one of the youngest fighters that 247 will have. Uh, you've been 18 for about four or five months. So really great that this is the way you're getting into things. Before we get into the fight that's coming up, let's talk about your... Uh, Growing up, as far as sports goes, did you get into organized sports or were you always doing martial arts? What has your sport experience been like and what led you to training any of the martial arts, particularly MMA? Okay, so growing up, I didn't play too many sports. I was always on like the uh, the heavier side of the spectrum, to say the least. I was a big kid. Uh, and I played flag football for about a year. And then I quit that. And I was probably about 10 years old when I quit that. Uh, and then I would say when I was 15 is when I started to get into martial arts and exploring it. I started out watching uh, Tony Jeffries on YouTube, taking his tutorials and just shadow boxing at my house because that was the only way I could learn it at the time because I didn't have money to afford, you know, the equipment to do it. And uh, yeah, that that's really about it. And what got you connected to PA Combat Sports? Uh, for people that may not know, it's really exciting because PA Combat Sports, your gym, is the newcomer gym of the year, the new gym of the year for 247. That is very exciting. Your gym, as you probably know, had a really great run last year in MMA in 247. So you won the, the your gym won the awards that were just announced a couple weeks ago. So how long have you been training at it? What has that gym been like to you? And what are your thoughts on on your gym being a uh, new gym of the year? Uh, I think it's great that we won new gym of the year. Uh, we have a really good team down there. and We're building a really good team, especially on the MMA side. We're a smaller team, but we are slowly building that. And I started training down there, in, I think, March of 2022. Uh, really, I just looked up, you know, the closest uh, gym to me, and that happened to be it. I started out with kickboxing and then uh, I always knew I wanted to compete and Professor Casey knew I always wanted to compete until one day I was just hitting the heavy bag. He came up to me and he was like, you know, what do you want to compete in? What do you do? Kickboxing, boxing, MMA. And I was like, I want to do MMA. And he's like, you got to start jujitsu. And from that day on, that's when I started doing jujitsu and had a couple tournaments since then and just been building my skill set. Makes a lot of sense. It's always important to kind of know from the coach's perspective, what you want to be competing in, because then you have to build training around that. Uh, how has the tournaments been? You know, jiu-jitsu tournaments, they're kind of classic for hopefully getting multiple matches in the same day and, and kind of a lot of experience. So what's that been like for you so far? They've been absolutely awesome. Uh, all the tournaments I've had, I've had plenty of matches. Uh, I've done, I'd say, very well at the tournaments I've done. I have a very high submission rate, which I'm very proud of. And that's something I look to keep going in MMA. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know, jiu-jitsu has aspects that translate perfectly into MMA with the ground uh, and submissions, which makes a lot of sense given, uh, given what you want to be doing. Um, I know, I mentioned it before we started recording, I know you're one of the uh, black belts at PA Combat sports justin bensma so shout out to justin bensma i guess professor bensma now very exciting to see i was talking to him back when he was a senior in college he kind of right at the end of college from what i remember said that he wanted to get into jujitsu and of course went on the journey uh to, to go all the way from white belt all the way up to black belt i believe primarily at pa combat sports not 100 percent sure but it is great to see how well your gym's doing and then also for a school that can do boxing, jiu-jitsu, Muay Thai, and MMA, kind of that well-rounded, also cool to see um, what impact you guys are having. Now, let's get to the fact that you're 18. Obviously, you're only the age you are. It's not like 
Uh, you can be older than you are right now. What makes this a good time for you to make your debut? Well, I feel like I'm ready. I want to have a long career, and I feel like a lot of people wait too long to make their debuts. And I know that you know throughout my career, I can space my fights out because I feel like a lot of people they might take it too quickly and they might not give themselves and necessarily enough time to recover their bodies and you know their head even and because I feel like a lot of people rush their careers and it, it, they end their careers early because they rush it. Yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense given the fact that you've been training almost two years. You said March of 2022 20, at the gym as far as, so almost two years of training. Sure, you started at 16, you started, which makes sense, started shadow box training, YouTube at 15. So yeah, that all, that all makes a lot of sense. That's one of the reasons why coaching is important, being around coaches, them seeing your skill set. Uh, you are taking on a guy. It's great for the story. You're taking on a guy who's a decade older than you. Your opponent is 28. You're 18. And of course, he said on another interview, I encourage people to check it out on the same uh, channel here that, you know, there is a difference. He thinks in strength because of somebody being 10 years older than you. How often do you train against people that are older and maybe that older man's strength? against you whether it be at your gym or in tournaments and how do you think you'll deal with the strength and then we'll get into some of the other fight aspect um every single day dude everyone i train with they're all older everyone i've gone against in competition all older to me i'm not worried about the strength aspect i actually think that's where i will excel in this fight mm -hmm. so uh yeah it's a little weird to hear that i feel like i feel like i'm gonna do well there well yeah that's one of the reasons why the fight is the fight right? It, both both fighters are going to have their you and your opponent are going to have your own viewpoint until you go in and actually have the fight. Um, as far as your training goes, how good do you think you are at adjusting? That that can come a long way in MMA, particularly you've been doing tournaments, so you know sometimes you have to be able to make adjustments. Like you said, you're going in confidently, believing that you'll be as strong and the stronger opponent to your opponent. But how good are you at adjusting? in training and practice if you need to uh if you need to change kind of your strategy because mma has so many levels from striking to the grappling to submissions to takedown to takedown defenses sometimes in retrospect it's a learning process people will rewatch a fight and realize that they could have made an adjustment so how good do you think you are at adjusting and listening to your corners i feel i'm very good at adjusting especially in mma aspect because you know if you're always getting beat on the feet you can take them down, you can clinch up, you can do work there. There's always an easier way to victory, and that's what I'm always looking for, the easiest path to victory. Yeah, I mean, that goes all the way back to uh, Bruce Lee's, you know, explanation about water, that water takes the easiest path in fighting. And I think that is an aspect of MMA that's so uh, leveled, multi-leveled in MMA, because we've seen sometimes people very smartly, if they want to keep striking – they get up, you know, they stand up, they make their opponent come back up. We've seen fighters get a knockdown and then rush in and maybe get submitted and then later say, oh, I should have stayed on my feet or vice versa, depending on the situation. So that goes a long way. Uh, maybe with your jiu-jitsu tournaments, how comfortable are you listening to your corner in the heat of competition? Obviously, you haven't been in an MMA fight before, but how well do you think you'll be able to listen to your corner? And do you know who your corner will be or corners will be? for your first fight and how good do you think you'll be at, at kind of adjusting with what they're saying? So I'll have uh, Professor Casey in my corner and Professor Bensema. They'll both be in my corner. Uh, I feel I'm very good at, you know, listening to them, especially under pressure. That's something I'm always doing in the gym is staying in the moment, keeping my mind clear and thinking correctly. Cause if you lose your train of thought and you start reacting off of emotion or anything else other than actual thought, that's how you get in bad positions, and that's how you lose. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And being able to think and listen uh, and respond, obviously there's the striking component, which can happen very quickly. There's a lot of components where you'll have time to be able to listen. Uh, what are your thoughts as far as predictions go? It's your debut. There's a lot that you're going to learn regardless of how the fight goes. But do you want to make a prediction coming into your first fight? Yeah, I'll make somewhat of a prediction. I want to predict the whole thing. But given my, uh, you know, my history, my record, I feel like I'm going to get this finish in one way or another. Hopefully it's a knockout. I'm not saying that to disrespect Tyler, all due respect. 
but that's what I would want. You know, that, at the end of the day, that's what I'm coming for. Well, that's the mindset you have to have when you come into a, to a fight. We've seen amateur, or I should say novice amateur rule sets get clean knockouts more, most recently. Uh, just the last card in December, uh, we saw um, a, a fight would end in that way, but it's pretty rare and pretty hard to get. Not that you can't do it. We've seen it done, but because of the rule set, uh, knockouts can be a little trickier. You can still, you can still get it. I'll be looking for Darushi made uh, an incredible uh, knockout. I don't know if you watched that fight, but um, he did a great job getting like a clean knockout. We've also seen Hoot Lee, who's now fighting for the title. Uh, if, if you don't have or if you have access to 247 Live, go back and watch one of Hoot Lee's fights. He's had three fights in 247. One of them, he actually wins by uh, ground and pound, a novice rule set. So for anybody that thinks that you can't win by ground and pound, a novice rule set, you can. You just can't strike above the clavicle to any part of the head, and he actually wins by knees and things to the body. So check that out. I think that'll be very helpful to you and anybody uh, yes, novice rule sets limit strikes to the head on the ground, but it doesn't mean you can't win by ground strikes. We saw that happen with Hoot Lee. It's only the second time I've ever seen in hundreds of, of, of fights at the novice uh, rule set with finish on the ground with strikes, but it is possible. And so it, it, it's sort of how creative do you want to be with either your strikes or your submissions. Overall, really, really exciting. Um what type of, of family or friend support do you have coming in this fight? Do you have a lot of people excited about you, or do you think it's mainly going to be your gym and a few others? What are your thoughts on crowd support? Oh, I've had amazing support from my friends and family, and even people just online, really. I've had, I've had guys from literally different countries asking me for the link to watch this just because they see me comment on, like, an Instagram post or mm -hmm. something about me making my debut. So the, the support's going to be fantastic. There's going to be a lot of people there, and there's going to be a lot of people watching pay-per-view as well. One person I'd like to say in particular is my friend Kyrell. He has been a huge part helping me get ready for this. You know, I can't drive yet, so he's taking me there to the fight. He's the reason I'm able to show up. So, uh, yeah, I want to say thank you all my friends and supporters. Yeah, that goes, that goes a long way, particularly your friend, doing the logistics of driving you not only to the fight, but all the things you have to do that, that makes sense, right? That's part of being where you are at, at your age level is you make the most of, of what you can do. Super excited that you mentioned the pay-per-view. We always recommend, you know, people can buy tickets and or order the pay-per-view on 247fighting.com. If they're going to do the pay-per-view, the best recommendation is to download the 247 live app. It's, it's a full, wonderful app that 247 runs, 247 Live. It can be downloaded on smart TVs or anything that can get apps. Then from there, they can, somebody could order uh, a single pay-per-view to support you and, and to watch you. We always recommend that they get the year's subscription, which not everybody might want to do, but it's really a great deal because they get every pay-per-view uh, for that year and the entire, maybe you've even done this, the entire uh, catalog of all fights in 247 history, including the ability to not only watch all of them, but s sort by gym or by fighter or by type of win, like knockout, things like that. So it's a really great subscription. And obviously it's been announced that 247 has bought a permanent uh, venue. And once it opens up, they're even going to be doing more events there uh, so that, that uh, people that are grandfathered in will be getting even more bang for the buck. So, Really been great having you on the show. Can't wait to see this. Debut versus debut is always exciting. I often think about this. Um, I mentioned Hoot Lee with his ground strikes, knees in his second fight, uh, knees and strikes to the body to win. But I called his debut fight, and he looked like a guy who, who had already had a couple fights. And that's what I think is really exciting about debuters. You're making your debut. Your opponent's making your debut. And hopefully both of you look like you already have some experience, you know, it's a learning curve looks like you've already put in good training. Um, and then that just kind of, that just kind of develops your career from there. So can't wait to see it just a week away. Really appreciate you coming in. The, the next seven days are going to go by really quickly. I'm sure for you and everyone on the card, it's a jam packed card. I think last count 13 fights, I believe sometimes that that could change a little bit as it gets closer, but still it's an incredible card. 
novice amateur like you, all the way up to advanced amateurs, including a title fight and then also pro fights. It's just stacked top to bottom. Can't wait to see it. Brawl in the Berg 20 for 247 Fighting Championships at the Murraysville Sports Zone Arena. Going to be an absolutely incredible fight. Thanks so much to you, Jaden Blake, for coming on. This has been Luke Payson with Jaden Blake on MMA FanCast. Best skills to you.